That's okay. what I do. And we are welcoming people to responsible local travel in the USA. Our entire month of May hangout and online conversation all about great travel options for visitors and locals alike and focusing on the U.S. today. I'm Ron Motter, host of Planeta.com, here joined with good friend Deborah McLaren. Deborah, good morning. Good, morning, good afternoon Ron. to you. Yeah, good, after good morning to you. You're still in Vegas, so yeah. Yeah, it's two hours earlier. It's 10, it's, uh, it's 10 a.m. here, tw uh, 12 for you. Mm -hmm. And this will be a tradition through the month of May as we invite friends to, to watch and participate in these discussions. Right. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad we're having these discussions and starting out today is a day to just have anyone who wants to set in and learn how to do Google Hangouts. So you're invited to speak up if you're on or listening and you need some help. And if and uh, the majority, the vast majority of people will not be watching in real time. They'll be watching an archive later on. And uh, please, you know, those questions are certainly welcome. Um, posted on the event page or the YouTube video later on. Um, Deborah and I are going to go through some of our presentations and materials um, and you know, do a little bit of brainstorming about where we would like to go. Because the fact is, you know, we're starting with a blank slate. You know, this is, uh, uh, this is an exploratory dialogue about organizations, associations, and working groups and how to connect the dots, so to speak, here in the United States. Um, what would you like to make out of this Responsible Local Travel Month, Deborah? Um, well, I'm really excited to find out what's out there, what's already in place um, and going on in the U.S. Just sort of uh, working in April, doing a little research and finding out about um, ecotourism programs and native cultural guidelines that are being uh, prepared. Um, a, a lot of you know what's going on with the food movement. There's a lot of overlap um, with with um, travel in the U.S. And so it's been exciting finding out about those groups and inviting them to participate um, and to share with us. So I'm looking forward to finding out about what's going on and just getting a. a you've been calling it a who's who of responsible local travel. Uh, and it's some kind of inventory or continuing to build up on our wiki, which is planeta. Oh, wait, planeta slash. Planeta.wikispaces.com. Uh, okay, and um, in the Google Plus uh, area that we're working on, and then we've done some slide shares and some other resource information, but really the wiki is where we're keeping track of things. So um, we wanted to make this very transparent for anybody that's listening that wants to know about these things too and wanting to figure out how we may be able to collaborate better, get some of our very similar messages out to a broader audience um, and, and just really figure out what's happening in the U.S. and how to make um, our local travel and our travel here in the U.S. more responsible. So that sums it up. <laughs> that, that does sum it up. I'm showing you the uh, the wiki page. Mm -hmm. uh, this is planeta.wikispaces.com uh, slash backslash uh, local travel USA. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's a work in progress. You know, we keep track of this. It's been edited now 158 times. Mm -hmm. uh, it has links to our SlideShare presentations and the local travel USA hashtag. Mm -hmm. um, just scrolling through it, um, it includes our slideshare presentations. It goes into this format and discussion in depth. It gives you a calendar of activities. Uh, you can download the May 2015 calendar featuring the container park. Um, it includes general questions, information about the organizers, tasks for participants. These are the things you can do. If this were a face-to-face -face conference, we could say, hey, go over to this corner and talk to these people about this or that. Well, we're online, so we're going to ask you to make the most of the social web. That's your Twitter, your Flickr, your Ustream, your SlideShare, your Google Docs, your YouTube, on and on. Uh, it gives us a, a task for the organizers, that's Deborah and myself as well, what we're doing, what we've been setting up. 
the big picture of responsible travel, the challenges uh, that we've identified, and resources elsewhere on the web. And brand, brand new is the Storify curation of the tweets and posts. And again, all of that depends on what you want to share. And uh, we're just going to collect the information and try to relay the information uh, also on the social web. So, you know, thanks to you, whoever you are, uh, participating. Uh, ideally, you know, the people that I mean, I, the people that I would love to see participate are the the government officials working on tourism, the government officials working on tourism, but indirectly. And in that umbrella, we see uh, people who work at markets, uh, work at the parks, uh, work with um, different cultures in the United States, whether that's uh, Native American, Indigenous here in the United States, or if it's the foreign communities. I just had a wonderful, wonderful time at the uh, Las Vegas Mela Indian Festival Culture and Food last weekend. And if we can find and identify some of those local hotspots, I think that's uh, one of the roles for this month-long conversation. So please share some of your favorites. Deb? Um, I'd just like to add that um, international folks are welcome as well. Um, responsible travel is a concept that is not huge in the United States yet, and we're working on that. But um, it is a concept and a term that's more common in Europe and Asia, Africa. So we, uh, we were just on a hangout a week or two ago with some South African uh, travel specialists that have been working on responsible travel there in South Africa for a while, trading information and learning from each other. So those, all of those kind of people are uh, welcome to sit in, um, as well as people that are thinking about coming to the U.S. I know that there are travelers from all over the world that want to know, uh, you know, about the U.S. and where the responsible uh, tourism programs that they can visit and learn about and um, you know uh, we'll have people on during the month um, that will specifically be addressing those kinds of questions. I want to just uh, quickly uh, share this screen. I did a quick search and not to call call out but I did a quick search for responsible travel on the Colorado website mm -hmm. and I got this response. Did you mean possible trail? So no specific responsible tourism being advertised or marketed or developed there that we can see at least on their it, website. It's not explicitly searchable and and then again it's it's we, we often think about ecotourism or responsible tourism probably is things you do outside, elsewhere. Well, I will go to a foreign country and do ecotourism, or I'm going to go to a foreign country and do responsible travel. And I think what we have to say is, no, it's available at home, and you're a part of this great, big, virtuous circle. Now, how do you want to engage? So we're going to be taking a look uh, at the good practices. So, you know, folks around the United States, if you have, uh, if you have explicit responsible travel policies, you know, let us know. And if it's not explicit, fine. You know, I love what Ethan Gilbert says about the local travel movement. You know, it's it's uh, it's descriptive. Uh, it's these different options and all of the above in different combinations. You know, we're not creating a new set of guidelines for responsible local travel. But and I think what will also come out of this conversation is that Deborah and I I'd say agree 90, 95 percent of the time, but we also come at it from different angles. And so we're going to be getting different stories from our perspectives and from what we're doing uh, in 2015. And again, we welcome your participation. Absolutely. And yeah, we do have different takes on it. We've been working in, in different areas and I kind of um, work more in the um, community development area and you work, well you do too, but you are a, you're a techie. You're the. It's an attitude, not the technology. Well, you've been doing uh, Planeta.com is probably one of the first and most comprehensive 
ecotourism and responsible tourism websites um, that I know of. It's been around for 20 years. Well, yeah, and and the thing is, you know, it's been showing that we're you know willing to use new technologies and use cheaper technologies uh, to get the message across or to get our questions across. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I remember, you know, as a kid back in the 70s, you know, you would go to the public library and you would be lucky if you could get a three-month-old newspaper from a foreign country or a foreign state. <laughs> yeah. And now, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it's instantaneous. Now, the question is, you know, libraries have repurposed themselves and redesigned themselves. They're, they're no longer subscribing to three-month-old newspapers. And, you know, we have to, you know, change with the flow as well. And yeah, we will be talking about libraries and museums and archives, and uh, and see how those uh, connect to the to the travel and tourism worlds. Uh, I do work with communities, and I work with communities very, very, very slowly. You know, at their at their at their pace. And one of the things that I've seen, particularly working with markets, um, is the fact that there is this been there is this incredible generational shift of people over 30 or 40 not using Facebook and the people under 20 using it and again it's going to change to Instagram or Snapchat or whatever but you know we have these tool uh, the we have these tools to let people know hey here we are and it's either yeah we have fresh tomatoes or we have uh, you know we have um, you know, dog art or <laughs> yeah. I just got back from the country fresh market and uh, the lady is making recycled ties for dogs and she goes to these uh, goodwill type stores and buys the ties and then makes it into a dog collar and uh, and sells it at the market. And yeah, Sharon and Richard, they're using Facebook, but you know they're the exception. And the question is, I'm not focusing on the technology, it's not Facebook for Facebook's sake, it's a question of how do we use it and make the most of it. And looking abroad, you know, this week, you know, the response and the reaction and interaction, for example, about Nepal. Uh, has really shown the value of some of these efforts of collaboration and sharing information in real time. And uh, Gopi from uh, on the Responsible Tourism Networking page on, on Facebook has uh, been doing extraordinary work about this. And again, he's, you know, and he's even saying, I can't believe uh, uh, how we can use this crowdsourcing and this information sharing on social media. So we should be able to do this outside of times of crisis. And that's going to be this point in this month-long dialogue all about you know, how we're using these technologies to make uh, travel better for the locals and for the visitors. Exactly. You know, I want to share something with you now, though. Um, let's see if I can get it up here. Um, there are... Um, States that are are doing some really cool things. Can you see that? That's Oregon. See Oregon. Yeah, um, Oregon's done some fabulous work with communities and have set up their own philanthropical uh, programs that benefit communities that visitors benefit the communities that they visit. They've done some. They've set up their own um, film lab to. Uh, be able to capture and share stories of local communities in Oregon. Uh, they're just doing a lot of stuff, so uh, we may not be able to um, find a lot of the term responsible tourism in each state. And it, it, it's still a growing concept here, but um, there are places that we can look to for some really good examples and really learn from. And I'm grateful that they're setting up their story sharing uh, program. I've already seen what's going on uh, in a couple of communities there where, uh, for example, a, a small community decided that they really wanted to develop their tourism and develop it sustainably and develop it as a hub from the center of their city. So they do a lot of uh, mountain biking, set up mountain biking trails, and then the small businesses that have been set up can can accommodate those kinds of visitors to their community. Um, there's also um, a, a program that they have in Oregon that says, I speak 
And those people, no matter where they work, they're specialists in something in their community. So uh, I saw an older guy that works at a bike shop. I thought he would say, I speak bicycles. His sign says, I speak wildflowers. So visitors are invited to talk to him about the wildflowers in the area. So, you know, it is really beautiful that they're um, really focusing on how communities benefit instead of just the traditional marketing. You know, what have we got to market? What have we got to sell? And so states that are really looking inward and looking at tourism and travel as an economic development resource for communities letting them decide on their own what's appropriate to share with outsiders um, and building around that I think is, is wonderful. They're building on their own knowledge as well and sharing that is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Well, it's great. You know, you know, story sharing and storytelling, you know, they've, in many ways they've been overused tropes in our dialogue about travel and, and uh, experiential tourism and they become these buzzwords that don't mean that much until you see them in practice and until you see that they can actually connect locals and visitors, whether the visitor is from a foreign country or a foreign state or it could be from a different neighborhood. Uh, but it's that in that conversation that we have with people that go in unexpected directions that uh, you know make the most of our time and again a mutual use of time. I mean as a you know as a you know, as a journalist, activist, catalyst uh, when I visit the markets and I ask people, you know, about things, you know, you, you know, immediately the, the conversations cartwheel into directions that I was not expecting. You know, this month we're kind of promoting uh, the national parks and uh, Yellowstone in particular, and uh, talking to Richard at the market today, and he says, "Well, do you know about the the geysers in Nevada?" So you know, we'll be looking at that. We'll be looking at rural Nevada. We'll be looking at a, a, a region called base, a project called. Basin and Range here in in Nevada, um, with optional side trips and visits to places like Mount Irish and uh, the extraterrestrial beef jerky restaurant. Uh, oh, yeah. There are so many wonderful things, and we're going to see if we can find some of these places and people and give them the promotion that they really deserve because this is the type of tourism that we expect to flourish in 2015, 2016, 2020. It's the connection that we have, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to learning some things. Right. The connections, the stories, um, a lot of it is about um, and why we use responsible and the term local in this discussion. Uh, I just want to share this information from Bali, which is um, considered a localist organization. They're having a big uh, conference and gathering this week, um, but they work towards localism, and this is one of their definitions that it's really about community building. Can community you read that out loud? Yeah, localism is about building communities that are more healthy and sustainable, backed by local economies that are stronger and more resilient. It means that we use regional resources to meet our needs. Reconnecting eaters with farmers, investors with entrepreneurs, business owners with the communities and natural places on which they depend. And it recognizes that not one of us can do it alone and that we're all better off when we're all better off. So it really is about sustainability, uh, buying from each other in communities, uh, acknowledging that we're in this together. Uh, this next slide here is uh, again from Bali about why ownership matters and place matters. With local ownership comes local accountability. Um, when you live in a community where your business decisions are felt, you have the understanding to make better decisions. Um, this is not the case when a corporation, big corporation, is in a community. They uh, don't have as much accountability. Um, they're not part of the local community, so their impact, they really don't have accountability to the community. The place here, uh, place matters, supply chain decisions based on choosing local resources like vegetables and energy and other locally made goods um, engender a 
natural respect for environmental and human resources in the place. So preserving the diversity of our food and different cultures is not only smart, but it's much more fulfilling. That certainly applies to tourism and travel. Uh, we're all better off when we're better off. They go back to this again. Opportunities matter. Um, we miss out when there's inequality on good ideas and relationships and systems can collapse. So there, Bali is really working to change that every man for himself or maybe every woman for herself concept um, because they promote the concept that real security comes from a secure community. And they're working for a fair trade and decentralized power and business ownerships. And to do that really breaks down to the concept that relationships matter most. So only through cooperation were we able to rebuild local food distribution, for an example, or make a renewable local energy affordable. So we're really, just like this travel conference, hangout, discussion, we're really trying to um, reconnect people, travelers and eaters with their farmers and investors. Um, and, and business owners and the communities and natural places on which they depend. And no one can do it alone. And why would we want to anyway? Why uh, would so, we want to? Yeah, do, do that alone. So um, I think it's really nice summary of what localism is and why it's so important for sustainable communities, the healthy communities, and what, how we can apply that to the tourism and travel industry in the United States. Let me ask you one question. Uh, who is Bale? Uh, Bale is, um, I believe they're based in California. Um, they, let, me, let me go to my internet and I'll bring up uh, their contact information. Uh, Please but do. And, then, and then you do that and uh, if you can't, if, it, if it's easy. And make sure you add a, a link to their page uh, on our show, on our event page. I'm glad this is a practice today because I am bringing up all kinds of software on my new computer that um, I didn't even know existed. So let me get rid of all of this so I can go to the internet and find what we're looking for here. But Bali um, it is very much focused on microenterprise and small business in the United States. They do a lot of work. They have fellows, a fellows program around the country, of leaders that are really making a change in the United States as far as focusing on localism first and why it's important to buy local and be connected. Like I said, they have this conference every year that's, that's fantastic. I was able to give a presentation for them uh, a couple of years ago on developing a niche with art, food, and travel. Small businesses that, you know, opportunities there. Uh, but uh, they're, they're just fabulous. I'm going to actually put a link probably when this is over on our, our wiki. And I'll also put a link to um, a very short discussion by the president of Bali about localism. It's a very short little video. I'm going to throw out this as an aside. I find uh, the words localism and localist kind of hard to use. But I'm not debating you on it, um, but I think we, we're going to need a little work for at least me to wrap my tongue around that. Yeah, I think it's a, a, like I said, in certain sectors, I think it's really growing. So in small, people that are working in small business sectors um, are certainly using it. People that are working in community development are using it. Um, micro enterprise and micro enterprise finance, those are common terms there. Um, you know, the other... Um, thing about Bali, and their tagline is actually be a localist, um, they have a lot of tools and resources on their website too, so I just want 
people to know what a great resource they are. Beautiful. I mean, there, there are a lot of good things out there, and Deborah and I have been identifying them, and we're inviting people to our uh, Friday Hangouts. We'd love to have someone from Bali to present here, uh, and people who are interested in working in this field. Yeah, Bali stands for Business Alliance for Local Living Economies, and it's <laughs> are you looking, if, if you're looking at their website, share their, share, uh, can you share the screen? Yeah, hang on just a second. Let me bring this up to the front. Perfect, and thank you. Thank you to the thank you to our viewers as well. We do see some live faces there, and uh, great to see you in real time. 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Las Vegas time, 12 to 1 p.m. in Minneapolis slash to St. Paul. So there you can see that is their. Um, home site or about Bali um, and it is it's spelled B-A-L-L-E it's pronounced Bali like Bollywood like Bollywood right it's business alliance for local living economies and basically they are about connecting leaders spreading solutions and attracting investment towards local economies a local economy movement Hey, wait a yeah. second. They're going to have uh, wait a second. They're going to have their conference in Phoenix, June. What is that? Ten to the twelfth. Yes. Yes. Is that at the same time you're going to be there? I'm going to be in Flagstaff. Oh, good. So maybe uh, you'll be able to to put put in some of that there too. Uh, they do have a. a Fellowship program, so if people are involved in these kind of things um, and want to be part of their fellowship program, there is the opportunity. It's a year-long opportunity to work with them and work with other localist leaders around the country. So um, there you go. Beautiful. Hey, uh, I want to share a screen, too. I want to play this game. and okay. um, uh, And I, I welcome your questions, Deb. Um, but this is the latest, latest version of Responsible Local Travel in the USA presentation on SlideShare. Mm -hmm. And you can see right now it has 60 slides. Second. When I so, see that slide of Banner, I just want to start you know, singing some patriotic song. <laughs> it's so great. It, it makes me want to go to a baseball game. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here are the posters. Uh, this is the and all of this is uh, uh, archived online SlideShare with mm -hmm. a Creative Commons license that allows you to reshare. So please, you're you're welcome to embed this in a blog or a wiki or a website. Um, this is uh, the May calendar again, featuring Container Park, a beautiful, wonderful venue in downtown Las Vegas. Um, these are some of the tasks, the things you can do if you want to, if you're using the social media. Uh, we are seeking volunteer editors, and Deborah will talk more about that. We are asking people to answer a survey, and again, the link is on our on our on the various pages. I don't expect anyone to be able to read that link. No, <laughs> it's kind of small. Oh, and this is even smaller. We have an online resource guide where. We'll be creating some transcripts of these conversations and compiling some of reader favorites, reader, viewer, audience favorites. Uh, this is a tip for, for Deb, and this is what I've done. On my browser, I use Chrome. Uh, I've added a bookmark uh, or a favorite to the wiki page and some of the other uh, substantial substantive pages for the event. So if you're going to come back to the page, make it easy. Well, what is responsible travel? And you know, I would boil it down to this. It's a good place to, a good place to live is a good place to visit. And it borrows from a, a Cape Town declaration, but it includes uh, a little more inclusive includes wildlife and, and rescue dogs. Um, why not visit places where people and animals are happy? Uh, I define responsible travel as a variation of the platinum rule, which kind of does the golden rule one better. It's basically do unto others as they would like to have you do unto them. You know, very often we're 
very charitable and we treat people the way we would like to be treated without realizing that again we have different backgrounds so how would you like to be treated than going along in that fashion and my favorite quote about the US tourism and hospitality sector is from P.T. Barnum the noblest art is that of making others happy so questions what makes a world-class city a world-class park a world-class museum well, the answer is responsible local travel. Are the locals welcome? Do the locals benefit? We're going to invite we're going to invite you to invite your friends to like responsible local travel. Go find it. Go seek it. We're going to have these hangouts. Today's our hangout, uh, May first, Fridays, 10 a.m. Vegas, 12 p.m. Minneapolis. We have these pages on Google Plus, and please, uh, participants and viewers, audience alike. Please plus one it and please share it in uh, on Google. Uh, we'll, future Hangouts will have a little bit of a different agenda, which is introductions, more visitor viewer participation, uh, presentations from our speakers, followed by a Q&A and final comments. And that again will begin next Friday with our first public and with other people chat slash hangout. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce this in the Dine Navajo language yet, but you know, thank you for your retweets. Gracias para tus retweets. Uh, there are various levels of engagement you can have. We're going to say, don't be a wallflower. If you want to make the most of us, a most of it, you got to be engaged. My level, my definition of engagement is being attentive, creative, generous, curious, and empathetic. More posters of editing time. Here's the poster of Silo of the Lambs, one of my favorite movies, my favorite movies. <laughs> um, you know, we have the information in libraries, archives, and museums, but they are kept far apart like grain, like corn from wheat. Excuse me. You know, <laughs> the web should be like that. Well, hello, friends in the Midwest. <laughs> Uh, we have our various Flickr groups, and it's you know Flickr Friday. So please, we'd love to see uh, uh, pictures of North American ecotourism and responsible travel, or a group called City Parks, or pictures from the World Market. These are all on Flickr. Or there are also Facebook. There's also the Facebook page of responsible local travel. There's also local travel on Google Plus. And our own community. Again, this is a terrible link to give to people, but you know we'll be focusing on local travel on Google+. Thank you, friends at Outbounding. Uh, we're having a bit of a discussion and promotion on that channel that uh, curates and features the best in travel writing. We're also featuring the USA Flipbook. And yeah, this is where I go into my nerddom. Uh, one of, a great application for curating information. Background resources, we're almost to the 10-year anniversary of the Responsible Travel Handbook. Uh, mm -hmm. Sherry Schwartz edited and uh, Transitions Abroad published. You know, thank you, thank you, thank you, Gregory Hubs. Yes, we were um, mm -hmm. editors for that. Uh, upcoming events, you know, this uh, dialogue will take place in May, but there are a couple of events uh, taking place that I think should be of, of note. Uh, in August, uh, Planeta.com and others are hosting an online discussion, uh, but only for one week, and that's the Indigenous Peoples Week that wraps around August 9th. In February, we're having Responsible Travel Week, uh, our, the eighth iteration, and that'll be February 8th to the 14th. Again, these discussions need to feed into that process. And here's something that I'm not directly responsible for. Uh, for. Here's something I'm a big fan of and that's Open Access Week. And Open Access Week promotes the values of open access, uh, Creative Commons, and the like. And that takes place October 19th to the 25th. And the tagline for that event is Open for Collaboration. Then, in this presentation, the current version, I have a couple pictures. And I'd just like to show you. That to me, this is what local travel is. It's going to local events. This, again, the, the Las Vegas Mela that took place last week in, in Las Vegas. 
or visiting a place, a shopping center like the Container Park, again in Las Vegas. Uh, outside in nearby Henderson, oh, my favorite German restaurant, the Bavarian Castle. Yes, uh, we can meet up at the Stammtisch, a uh, communally shared table. Uh, I haven't been here for five years, but Earl's Family Restaurant in Gallup, New Mexico is one of my favorite places and roadside attractions. Uh, I would stop at Earl's any a hundred and uh, two hundred times before I'd go to the Pizza Hut behind it. <laughs> Oops! Screenshots! Uh, here is my curation of some of the favorite uh, sites to visit. Let's start with local flavor. Good work, Deb, and mm -hmm. documenting documenting um, the local venues there in the beautiful state of Minnesota. Thank you. We're working on it. Uh, we're going to be talking to folks from Grape Discovery in New York. It's a one. It's the first uh, area to get an agricultural heritage designation, which has been huge for them, for tourism and local businesses and local food. Who who will we be speaking with? Andrew Dufresne, who served as a volunteer on the board for ten years and helped get the designation and get the funding to put together the Grape Discovery Center and uh, just been amazing at um, uh, and he will say he has not done this alone he will, he does not want credit for that he's worked with amazing people from the region and I've been able to go and visit there it's it's really exciting the small businesses and startups and farm markets and tourism and wineries that have resulted from their work Tell us about these folks, the American Independent Business Alliance. Well, I'm a member of that. Uh, Local Flavor is a member of our Twin Cities, our Metro IBA, and we were able to host uh, the National Amoeba uh, Conference here in Minneapolis last year. They are the people that help uh, build those buy local campaigns around the country. Um, and they again, they have a lot of tools. We hope to have someone from there um, sit in on our on our Google Hangouts this month. Beautiful. Uh, here, here's the the upcoming event. I may be hopefully participating in Flagstaff, the Native Innovation Educational Technology Conference, and that'll take place June 12th to the 13th. And they're using uh, technology to educate and innovate, and part of that has to do with tourism. Not, ne not, necess not explicitly, uh, but I'll drag them into it. Oh, good. <laughs> if only to create a, a local guide to Flagstaff. Um, Heidi Erdrich? Erdrich? Heidi Erdrich. I am not Heidi. sure if she's going to be able to. She's a very busy uh, professor and. Uh, you can see her book. She's just, uh, you have it here online. Her new book is called Original Local. And it's stories and recipes from the people, native people here in the upper Midwest, the Ojibwe and uh, Lakota, Dakota people. Um, she's an amazing writer, teacher, poet. I hope she's on. Um, if not, we're going to have uh, some other Native um, business owners and people that have been involved in tourism. But we'll make sure that you know if she can participate in real time or not. We'll make sure that we promote her book and her work and uh, get to know more about what she's doing. That just that looks scrumptious. That look at that book. Local recipes. Mm -hmm. And what I like best is the stories about where they're from. The last thing I'm going to I'm going to raise. Um, in this introductory chat is the connection between local travel and parks. And next year, 2016, is the 100th anniversary, the centennial for the U.S. Park Service. They've launched their campaign in the past month called Find Your, Find Your Park. If you can see the arrowhead and the P, that's the, that's the graphic arts at work. And it's amazing how much you know economic uh, capital the parks bring into local economies. Yeah, it really is. And this is 2013 stats. Uh, I have to update it with 2014, but it just it's mind-boggling. Um, in, in Atlanta, later this summer in July, there will be the Healthy Parks, Healthy People conference, and we'll be paying attention to that. Uh, just amazing uh, 
variety of things that we have in parks and protected areas around the United States. Uh, here's our resource page. Here's planeta.com. Here's Get Local. Here's our pages on Facebook and Google. Um, a presentation that Deborah made is on SlideShare. And yeah, with SlideShare, you can even save these presentations on your smartphone. I'm not smart enough to do that myself yet, but I'm working on it. And here is the the page on SlideShare. And please, if you can, you know, click, um, you know, comment, click, uh, click comment, share, embed, um, and we'll see if we can get people understanding uh, the challenges that are in front of us. By the way, right now we have 2,227 views, and my expectation is that by the end of May we'll have at least 5,000 views of this presentation. So, if I can include, you know, talk more about other issues, what we're um, we'll be updating that presentation throughout the month. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ron. Um, we get something else I wanted to share here with you. It's actually my. Uh, you, you showed the first page of it, and I. Um, do you want to talk about why we decided to have these discussions in May? Sure. It's also May, uh, the, the very first week of May is National Travel and Tourism Week in the United mm -hmm. States. And very, very few people, uh, I would say in the, it's only become kind of popular and well known in the past two or three years. And one of the objectives of having our conversation that goes throughout the month of, of May is to make sure that there's some focus on the local economy and the local benefits and the local inclusion. What Deborah says are the localist localist values. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, we, we were talking um, not long ago about how this was coming up and we felt like it was a good time to enter the conversation. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of, of my um, slide share with you guys. Again, um, this is the U.S. Travel Association, which is part of the Commerce Department. It's their celebration of the National Travel and Tourism Week, May 2nd to 9th. And we were thinking that they might be missing some points. Um, one of them is that a lot of benefits from tourism and travel go to corporations and shareholders that don't live in our communities. And we talked a lot about how important it is to invest in our communities. They also have a Power of Travel Coalition uh, and if you look down here at the bottom where the blue arrow points to, what are the major issues that their coalition is working on? It's welcoming international visitors, reducing travel hassles for visitors, keeping America meeting uh, the conventions going on in the big hotels, and enhancing our nation's infrastructure. That is what their coalition is working on this week. In fact, they're um, asking people uh, to tell Congress to pass a trade um, authority, which, in my personal opinion, those trade agreements don't always benefit small businesses in the U.S. What we feel is missing from this agenda is the focus on local economies, on small businesses, on healthy foods, on recognition that the travel industry benefits don't always reach the grassroots. Small businesses make up 90% of, of the businesses in this country and a lot of travel dollars that are spent in a local community don't stay there. They leak back to their shareholders. Again, like the corporation um, that we saw earlier, corporation page. So we're, we're hosting these. Again, there's the survey that you can take that's really helping us form the some of the discussion and questions. Some of the answers on this survey have uh, been about how people are starting really cool um, food hubs and incubators in their communities. Um, they're talking about it 
in relation to the environment and what tourism is doing to preserve the environment. Um, again, we want to spend our time this month listening from some really cool, innovative places that are doing things and states that are doing things. There's again the Oregon one. And we're really looking at what are some of these grassroots sectors and campaigns that can work together. There's the whole foodie movement and the sharing economy. We're going to have Evelyn White from Book a Local and um, Michael, uh, the CEO from GeoShore Global, who is working on safety and health issues and travel. We're going to have preservationists that are using preservation for community development and tourism. And we're going to be looking at what are sustainable tourism practices. Um, again, there's a growing interest in markets and responsible local travel in the United States. Um, you've probably been part of them, and we're working to bring them together. If you go to the slide share, you can look at the reasons to support responsible travel. I'm not going to read them out loud because there's just so many. Uh, but also, you know, just gives you an idea that together we can build a strong network. And if you're wondering about who's putting this on and hosting, it's myself and, and Ron. And we're really excited to be doing this and um, getting a chance to bring people together from around the country. There you go. I'm going to stop my share. Beautiful. Hey. <laughs> Thanks. Nice presentation. Well, that's good. Yeah, I think you know you, these are works in progress, and I think mm -hmm. they should be able to give people a gist of what we're after, and also underscore the fact that you know so much of the month of May is going to be a mystery to us. You know, we want you to share and to take us on mm -hmm. this journey of uh, of exploring the United States. And if we can't, you know, we can't visit you in person this month, but uh, We'd love to you to take us down those blue highways and uh, and show us what we can really get behind. Yeah. <laughs> so, is there uh, anyone? Is there a way to if anyone has a question right now that the question the, the the Q and A app is uh, always open before and during the hangout, and so far no one has has asked a question yeah. in real time. Um, but uh, questions are welcome if you post them on. Uh, uh, again, on that Google event page or the YouTube video or Facebook page, um, and we'll make sure that we get those answered. Yeah, uh, you can send me an email. <laughs> don't send me an email. Don't send Ron one. He doesn't read them. <laughs> oh, that's so, that, that's so 20 years ago. Yeah, he's such a techie. <laughs> oh. But, so if, um, if if people understand half of what you said about all these different social media apps and things that we can do, they're ahead of the game as far as I am. And I'm on a Google Hangout, so I'm really proud of myself that I'm on here. <laughs> and that this is open and accessible to anyone that has the um, technology to get on and join us. Um, we are making it available during um, US-based work hours. Uh, we know it's hard for some people that are overseas to be able to, to stay up till 3 o'clock in the morning. We've already had that happen, but um, they'll be on YouTube. That's right, and we will you know, schedule these uh, chats accordingly, and, uh, and uh, this conversation is just, just beginning. Deborah, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Um, thank you, we'll Ron. We'll come to the end of our hour, but uh, we'll be, uh, we will be available for answering questions, and we will be updating our presentations. So, you know, to everyone out there, hope you're inspired and uh, looking forward to a great conversation. Thanks.